All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Renell Reed Show. <laughs> Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Renell. How are you? I am doing so great. It is wonderful to be here. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yep. How are you? A fist bump. Fist bump. Yes. How are you doing? Very good. Yeah. It's been a couple of years. <sighs> the, we have a full. We're I'm basically picking up where we left off mm -hmm. before. Um, now, it's impressive to you, but now we have a full Christmas with Emily and the kids script. Amazing. We have a full script. This is incredible. The full thing, and the I think you've thing. read it. If you read it before of course, the, I've read it twice. Before the show. Mm-hmm. I read it, but I had this is my first time seeing it on paper in all in its person. glory in person. Yes. So exciting. <laughs> I'm so impressed. I'd like to, um, for the audience, yeah. most people don't know how difficult it is, how much work it takes to write a feature length film script. script. And you did it. And yes. I just think that is the most, I mean, I'm blown away. Um, because, you know, over the past couple years, I had a lot of downtime during the pandemic mm -hmm. to, uh, to work on this, basically. Yeah, to get and, creative. Mm-hmm. And work. It's, it's impressive for it's you. It's so, it's amazing. I mean, I, I knew that you would do yeah, it. Can, I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. Can I show this to camera? Okay. First of all, is this our main camera? Any I think center that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's nothing more exciting to artists like us than a fresh new script. And mm -hmm. look, look at this baby. It's amazing. And it Absolutely. reads great. It's incredibly well written. The characters are Super interesting, well-rounded. They're so realistic. Um, yeah, because there's some, I, I guess, new ones that I hadn't told you about, um, but you've seen them in there. It's mm -hmm. Vanessa. Uh-huh. Love Vanessa. With her walker. Yep. But um, but we're, the best part is this Emily in this movie, she uses a wheelchair like we went over mm -hmm. but she's the best part is oh great if you want some best part is balls. <laughs> quick break for chocolate the Am best part is that emily is not mm. pinching off of the uh, welfare system mm -hmm. as i like to call it so-called pinching off the system Mm -hmm. she's um, got she's got a job she runs a business her mm -hmm. toy making business an incredibly successful business mm -hmm. almost too successful for its own uh -huh. good yeah I mean I don't know what page it's on exactly but I guess I shouldn't give anything away about her having to pause orders yeah, about her having to yeah. Basically, temporarily stop, but she does. Mm -hmm. She does actually resume them. She needs more staff. She Let's, needs, yeah. I mean, which is such an incredible problem to have. She's short staffed, so she mm -hmm. can't keep up yeah. with the uh, amount of uh, traffic that her website and her store is, is getting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And she takes incredibly good care of her staff. Mm -hmm. Something I've also always loved about that character and her mm -hmm. story. She uses a wheelchair, but she hires like a mix of non-disabled and disabled people too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which kind of um, is, you know, one of, we've talked about this on the previous show, mm -hmm. but I think one of the most exciting things that you did hear with this script is for example, Emily uses a wheelchair, but this movie is not about that. Like you, you know, we've talked about this for years. How mm -hmm. 
this is just a, a slice of real life where people are differently abled and you know her staff for example is just a mix of normal people just like normal life and and like people who use walkers i think i even had a, a one of the new hires towards the end of the film using a service dog because mm -hmm. he or she is blind mm -hmm. i think yeah i feel like her name might be kimberly uses a walker there's a few people but it's i just like how you incorporate that because that is real life but it's not so much about that no one's you know focused on that it's just who they are it's part mm -hmm. of their character and when they say things like oh, phones are rigging off the hook mm -hmm. and it's it's just an example of just how busy busy Slammed. and hectic it is Slammed. yeah they are it's christmas season and they are <sighs> doing can't keep up can't hardly. keep up <laughs> yes which is how long actually this is a question i meant to ask you how long has she owned this business would you say mm -hmm. For at least uh, like a couple years, <laughs> and Four or I five think years, maybe? I, I, yeah, I think she gets into it with her conversation with Aunt Sue. Mm. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Aunt Sue, another fantastic character. Mm -hmm. She is so sweet. She's so wholesome. Mm -hmm. She is just absolutely lovely. She mm -hmm. loves the kids. Mm -hmm. She loves Emily. And She's a doll. Mm -hmm. She's in her late 50s, early 60s, and mm -hmm. her husband, Eddie, mm -hmm. is around the same age. Yeah. So, I would say it's almost ready for casting. Oh, absolutely. Do you have um, any... I'm really bad with names, but... Do you have anybody in mind, if you had your ideal, you know, anyone that could play Aunt Sue, for example, do you have anyone in mind? Beats me. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm looking for a person in her late 50s, early 60s. Mm -hmm. With a sweet... Remember Eileen Minder? From Double H. I do. Oh my God, she would be perfection. This is that. That's a great reference. She would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Um, anybody else like that comes to mind right away when you think about casting? Um, In general. Nobody that I know, <laughs> but we. I think we. I have to be um, at the casting uh, auditions auditions mm -hmm. to see what who, who who would fit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's just so many talented actors out there. Uh -huh. um, now Shannon is supposed to be black, and she is Emily's one of uh, disabled friends who also uses a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. um, think of this. How often do you see black disability representation? Never. Think back to... I can't to, think of any. Think back to any, like, movies. My Left Foot. That's one. Mm -hmm. Forrest Gump. Mm -hmm. um, Wild Wild West was another one where we saw a guy with no legs in, as the villain. Mm. And me before you, but they're all men. White men. Yeah. Um, have you ever seen female disability representation? I'm actually thinking about this. In a movie or... And... I would have to say no. I would have to agree, no. Truly no. So this is something truly unique, I mm -hmm. think. And unique and important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The best part is we don't focus, we don't even stereotype them. We, it's just 
who they are. Right. Yeah, that is one of the most unique and exciting parts of it. I think. But there's a reason that there's that they uh, that they're that things are the way they are. It's because there's a elite few decision makers in the film industry, and these decision makers believe that it would be too risky to display disabled people outside of the stereotypes, which they say have historically sold well. Mm. But um, I think this will sell even when we don't stereotype them. Mm -hmm. And this, this is what I like a lot of people, I think maybe you know, and mm -hmm. people within the disability community have been asking for representation that's this script. Yes. Absolutely. It's just time. Mm -hmm. It's well past time. How does this not exist yet? Well, it does now. It, it, it will. It will. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sure you like uh, the character of Tatiana. That's her youngest and only daughter. Mm -hmm. And her two sons, Chris and Jason. Mm-hmm. Now, we, we have a little bit better uh, representation of a little girl than we had on our previous show. Yeah. <laughs> this one is Minnie, Minnie Mouse. <laughs> Minnie Mouse, just about the exact size, minus the hands and the feet, of a real three-year-old child. Mm -hmm. And Tatiana just, just turned three, right? Mm, turned four in just the film. Three. Yeah. Yeah. And listening to some of the music before the show, let's get into that. Let's, yeah, let's get into that. <laughs> listening to some of the music, how you felt. Oh, I wish we could play it for everyone, but we should probably save it for the film. Mm -hmm. um, I felt each song, you played me five different songs. Yeah. And each one, immediately, Rennell is an expert music chooser at finding and music. finder yeah he discovers these artists that come up with incredible uh soundtrack music mm -hmm. and they all fit perfectly so as i'm listening to the first one which was the first one again oh the holiday type one mm -hmm. and i get feelings and it just gives you the feeling like you don't even realize so much how important music is in a movie mm -hmm. to create this whole feeling and this vibe and that one just felt very light and Christmassy mm -hmm. and exciting. And the next one with the the, the basketball. One. Was the, the basketball? It, 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 it had like a organ type sound to mm -hmm. it, kind of wintry. Yeah, yeah, it was cozy. It just made you want to be with your family. It felt it felt very like loving and mm -hmm. nice. I'm not trying to pull a High School Musical on on people but that would be like a if we had a scenario in the movie where Jason Emily's oldest son is the star basketball player of his school mm -hmm. and Vanessa is that's his girlfriend yeah she's she's a walker user well because her her uh spinal cord injury is incomplete. If you have an incomplete spinal cord injury, it means you can walk with an assistive device, mm -hmm. but she, which she can, but Emily cannot walk at all. Right. And Vanessa has always used a walker, right? Since she was like three. Yeah. But we, but we never like go into like her history. Right. It's, I'm hoping audiences just see that and it's just there without causing issue. Yeah. And it's not an issue for Jason and it's not an issue for really anything they do out no. like when they're out and about. Yeah. Um, would you, I know we've talked about this in the past, but it's been a while. I love the idea of, for example, a Vanessa character. I love the idea of casting an actor who really does use a walker. A 20-something-year-old woman? Mm-hmm. To play 17, because yeah. that's a 17, right? 
and she's she's got full full capacity, full mental capacity that is, mm -hmm. and because oh, totally. she's at school in the regular classes, but we. By the time we open up the movie, at least how it's in the proposal, mm -hmm. they're already on their Christmas break, mm -hmm. which, which is they're out of school already out of school for that, with the exception of you, of Emily picking up Tatiana at the library in the beginning, mm -hmm. after the little conversation with mm -hmm. Robert in her factory. Should we talk about Robert quickly? One yes. of my favorite characters. It's one that I would like to be casted for. Mm -hmm. Or I think I can make that decision. I think so, I too. I think I can <laughs> just play. Yeah. I think you can absolutely make that decision, Renelle. It's your script. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and Robert and Emily are co-workers, but also, like, very, very close friends. Yeah. They've known each other. I mean, I'm kind of making this up, but... In a long time. Yeah. I when I think about Robert and Emily, frankly, I think about me and you. Mm -hmm. We've been friends for almost twenty years. Yes. Yeah. It's been so long. It's been so long. <laughs> makes and, it, that makes us sound really old. And yeah. When so Tatiana, this is her, the representation of her. She loves like riding in Emily's lap, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that. When, when Emily's running errands and do, taking care of business, she, he, she always likes lap rides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're fun for her, and Emily makes it really fun. Uh -huh. And one of the things that, I, that I'm going to have Emily have, which is you in the movie, mm -hmm. is these sunglasses. Mm -hmm. May I? Like, have them on for the show. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Fist bump. Fist bump. Do I look like Emily? Yes. I feel like exactly Emily. Exactly the vision I I had, mm -hmm. but I I have that color and I have a gold color of sunglasses oh. of the same type, but that's just not these. It'd be cool if we added a scene where like Robert gave Emily sunglasses for Christmas. In the beginning. Or like, any time. Like as we open up the movie? Mm -hmm. Possibly. Maybe. Um, or else, it's you know, an idea. just be something that, you know, as the characters we think about, but it doesn't have to be in the movie. Oh, yeah. I love mm -hmm. that one. Oh, they're getting a little melty. Mm -hmm. It's funny to talk about a Christmas movie when in real life it's about 95 degrees outside. <laughs> <laughs> At least right now, mm -hmm. as, as we shoot, mm -hmm. today's date is uh, August 30th. Mm -hmm. 2022. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you look, you look great with those on. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and getting a wheelchair for you to that will fit you and mm -hmm. you know hope I want you to be comfy while you're in it mm -hmm. and something that's really important to mm -hmm. me is um, I have to learn how to use the wheelchair like someone who's used it my whole life mm -hmm. and for that I really want to go meet with some friends of ours that use wheelchairs in their daily mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and have them kind of teach me how to do that and Shannon is supposed to be a black person mm -hmm. who, uh, I, even I could coach you how to wheel, use a wheelchair mm -hmm. a little. I've been in one and I've sort of done some motions and yeah. I kind of know how to turn and yeah. left and turn right, go down ramps and things. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that Tatiana loves. Ramps. <laughs> and uh, just sitting in her lap, riding along. It's It should be fun for a little kid. Yeah. And for the mom, from, from Emily's perspective, much safer. 
to just have the child right here so she's not running around crazy uh -huh. like in that one scene. She goes across the street without paying attention mm -hmm. and nearly gets hit. That's so they say this is like I watched some interviews about disability representation in move mm. and in media and they it's like um for a movie is a commercial project and they say you have to have some conflict and no one wants to see happy people on TV and movie but I I will beg to differ Mm. I, I think this is long past time for this to happen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There is a little conflict, I think you could agree, when, when she uh, falls over on their way back from the playground, when mm -hmm. she falls, scrapes her hand, when she slips on some ice, mm -hmm. and you have to go get her. Yeah. Or, I mean, Emily has to go get yeah. her her little daughter. Yeah. There, there's some, there's, there's some. Oh, definitely. Conflict right there. Yeah, I would. I mean, that part when Tatiana runs into the street, it, you know, that's a heightened moment at least. And also, I would even say Emily um, dealing with her company. It's not like a bad conflict, but she's a little stressed out. You know, she's mm -hmm. got a make some hard decisions to pause orders and things like that. Dilemma. So, yeah, dilemma. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. it's, it's like, should I let let them, let the order, let the orders for her new toys continue or should I pause them? It, it, because Emily and Michelle, Michelle's one of the customer service uh, reps. Mm -hmm. It's like, phones have been ringing off the hook. You could tell by what they're saying that it's busy and hectic, mm -hmm. and the the way orders just keep piling up, and they're falling behind on them too. Yeah, and you know it's a tough decision. It's tough. Oh, definitely. And it's putting us already putting a strain on the current work staff mm -hmm. so it's I think they say it in at some point we need to hire more people and she actually does yeah because we we come back to the company after Christmas Day it's like there's like eight or ten new hires I think it's somewhere mm -hmm. seeing 100 and, or something yeah, it's like two thirds of the way through, maybe. Uh -huh. New hires mm -hmm. that uh, uh, that are brought on board, along with Vanessa, because you, I think they they tell Vanessa Christmas Day, you're hired. Yeah, <laughs> I love how they love Vanessa. She's mm -hmm. great. I mean, she's great. Of course, they v do. Vanessa's Jason's girlfriend. Yeah, I think yeah. you know. And she really is, she interested. feels like part of the family almost. And interested in being hired. Mm -hmm. And she says the thing like, I went through the second interview in the application process, it's just a waiting game. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you, you reassure her something like, they're, they, they're really busy, but they'll they'll they will be they will be emailing you or calling you soon or yeah. <laughs> something like yeah. that and then on christmas day it's the the best surprise of her <laughs> life yeah i know she's so excited and and then you tell her that you know, work work her work hours around school because mm -hmm. she's still like a junior or a senior in high school yeah do you think, um, <laughs> this is uh, outside of the script, but do you think that Jason and Vanessa will end up together forever? Mm -hmm. Or that could be a yeah. sequel? Possibly. <laughs> yeah. Um, whether there's a sequel to this or not will depend on the success of this movie. Right. 
What do you what do you picture Daniel looking like? Kind of like Jackie's husband, Scott Royale. Hmm. Great. Or someone like maybe Chris. Chocolate. Givarelli. Yeah. Oh yeah, he'd be great. Um, but I I'd like to go through a few actors. But we could just be, yeah. Get a like an idea. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to pop these on the top of my head for a second because I want to see you better. Mm-hmm. Um, would you consider someone not white for the role of Daniel? Obviously, whoever we cast as Daniel, it affects the who we cast as the children. Yes. But are you open, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, now, Stephen and Shannon are supposed to be black. Mm-hmm. A black actor could go to uh, Stephen mm -hmm. and Jenny. It's it's like that's like a little mini social group. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Just because Emily, just like anyone else, has to have a little time away from the kids. Mm -hmm. I like that scene with the pool table and the chest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like nothing like a good old-fashioned game of chess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. And, you and have to teach me wins. how to play chess. And Shannon wins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's okay. Cause Emily's like, I haven't played in a while. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, maybe they have like hot cocoa or mm -hmm. something. I'm thinking of hot, hot cocoa. But oh, Robert's yeah. also in that scene. Which means I have to be in it. So, hot cocoa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tea or hot cocoa. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I think we can decide. <laughs> um, I kind of leave certain parts of the script open for improvisation. Mm. You know what yeah. improvising is? Mm -hmm. Maybe explain it. For the audience. Just saying lines that aren't necessarily part of the, what the, your script is, mm -hmm. and just regular sort of talking between mm -hmm. the characters. Little, little bit of difficulties, but we're back on the air. Back, back on the, on the air. air. And <laughs> since we're running on a little bit low on time, <laughs> I'd like to show okay. you mm. a couple of these filmmaking tools mm -hmm. that I guess we could use these in areas in New York City where tripods aren't allowed, mm -hmm. like like the subway system or... because mm -hmm. there's a little bit of that in the movie. Yeah. And yeah, it's always safe to have a backup when you can't use a tripod. Uh -huh. So, what do we have here? <laughs> this, this is like a claw. Um, I'm widening it right now, mm -hmm. so so we can like get on a subway train and uh, this claw-like thing, tighten it up around one of the uh, poles, mm. the, uh, and the camera goes in this side. Mm -hmm. Tighten this up around the pole. Wow! Grip it, it has a good grip to it, and. It ain't going nowhere. It's like a built-in film crew. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And, or, this would be where your camera goes. Mm -hmm. so show that. Yep. On top of here, this easily unscrews. This comes off, will come, would come off mm -hmm. easily mm -hmm. to fit on this one. Oh. Uh, so either or. <laughs> oh, uh, I see. Attach this end to a metal surface or a glass surface mm -hmm. and it sticks like glue. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Would it stick here, like just so we can show camera as an example? Yeah. Wow. That's wild. So your camera is safe. Uh-huh. So this works in a car, in a 
anywhere. In a, a anywhere, train. In a train. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't even think about the train actually. Uh -huh. Stick the, it right on the window. Uh huh. And, and, and speaking of train, I think it Tatiana would could be like on the way to Albany, like her hand on the window and as you hold her. Mm -hmm. That's that's good, right? Maybe a, a pretty shot from exterior of the train if we see it go by. Uh huh. As it first takes off, you know, slowly like we used to film. Uh huh. As it leaves Pad Station, I mm -hmm. think that's there. And and as it comes into Albany, but we but here's what we don't show them getting off of it, and we show the train arriving at the Rensselaer station, which you've been in, right? A million times. Uh -huh. Yep. To go to the city. Yep. And we show then we have shots of like downtown Albany, but it's like. How did they get it to downtown Albany from the Rensselaer station? We don't show it. Yeah. But she said, I like that though. You know, we don't need to show every. Little. Exactly. Yeah. As, um, you know, we're both people who watch a lot of movies mm -hmm. and study them, you know, really understand it. Mm -hmm. And you don't even realize half the stuff that you don't need to see. Uh -huh. You know. And uh, they're. But before closing the show, too much music in some of these, like, Hallmark movies. Oh, God. It's not High School Musical, right? Or it's not a musical that yeah. we're watching. Yeah, it becomes distracting after a while. Mm -hmm. Especially when you've got, you know, great characters and a great script. You don't need all that music all the time. Mm -hmm. A nice, carefully selected... Uh, soundtrack like you're already putting together right now mm -hmm. perfection that's one of the ideas that Vanessa is or Jason is one of the star basketball players for his school mm -hmm. and he, he's had a either a away game or a home game I think do we have access to a school to film if we need, if we'd like to? A basketball game? A school. School um, scenes. I'm sure we could, especially if we do it during a uh, Christmas break or summer when vacation. There's, if we, yeah. When there's no classes. Yeah. To get like extras. And, yeah. And, and also, to be honest, a lot of buildings look like a school. You know, uh -huh. like Hudson Valley Community College, it is a school, but it, it could look like a high school easily. Like a, but I like the idea of having lockers in the hallways. Oh, true. Yes, you're right. I do like that idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the schools, I mean, one of our schools that we went to might be willing to cut us a little break and let us shoot in there for free. Mm hmm And a church that we have a there's many churches around here we could film it. Mm -hmm. It seems like, because Tatiana's super smart at just four. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and Emily's not one to sit around and get a welfare check. She's, she likes doing activities with the kids. Yeah. I even have an idea for like a raffle giveaway for one of the for a few of the toys. Yep, I love that. Yeah, she's very motivated and I I mean the way it reads to me is like I don't think there's anything wrong with accepting a welfare check if you're a person who could really use it. But Emily is like I'm not that person. I have my business. She just doesn't need it. Uh -huh. So she chooses to do her own thing. Um um, if you're disabled enough, like, it's okay to accept a welfare check if you need it. Absolutely. But, but um, Vanessa doesn't even, I never mentioned it, but maybe she doesn't get it either. Yeah. And, I mean, I, that's something I should, you should send me these interviews that you've been watching, but I don't know much about it, but I wonder if there's, you know partial checks or whatever, just like a little extra help 
Because sometimes things like having a disability may cost you extra money, you know, uh -huh. your wheelchair and things like that. So uh -huh. I think it's great to, you know, just shine a, a light on that. I'm trying to go against that kind of stereotype. Right. But um, right. She, she, she is one that is not... Oh, you, you said, uh, you like, you like how I d dive into sort of the, like the family, like this eating out thing is getting expensive and... <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what you said about that, but... I think that was just one, uh, one example of, um, I really love how it's just very real and very relatable. Mm -hmm. So you feel right away just through reading the script and definitely when you watch it like th You know these people, you know, you feel like these are people I I get it I totally understand them and they feel like someone that you'd be best friends with or like your real family mm -hmm. And I think that's really special. That's hard to hard to do for a lot mm -hmm. of writers Tatiana cries a little bit mm -hmm. when her mom leaves mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, which also, again, you nailed it on the head. Mm -hmm. That's exactly... I've been hanging out with my four-year-old nephew, mm -hmm. and they're... You know, kids are kids are emotional. Mm -hmm. And Tatiana loves her mother so much. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very, very um, close. They have a, big, a good bond together. A very special bond, yeah. It's And it's like... On uh, Christmas morning, or I'm just going over stuff real quick. I know we have to wrap up, right? Yeah. Oops. But um, on <laughs> uh, uh, Christmas morning, that we wish you a Merry Christmas that you heard. Yeah. That plays. Incredible. The cloud. It's, it's, you said it's absolutely gorgeous, beautiful version mm -hmm. of it. It's different. It just gives such a nice... It just makes you want to cozy up by the fire. Uh -huh. And it brings you right straight back to Christmas mornings. And Aunt Sue has a dog. And Eddie, they have a dog. Which they... It's like fresh and hot biscuits mm. for the dog. Yeah. On Christmas morning. Yeah. His little treat. Uh -huh. and, and you wheel you have you wheel you wheel yourself into the area where the uh tree the christmas tr near where the christmas tree is uh -huh. and it's tatiana and chris are running towards the tree mm -hmm. as and it's emily is the mom and it's like go go see what santa left you yeah i like the part where emily uh, right before that, wakes Tatiana up in the morning, mm -hmm. and Tatiana's like, Mom, and she's so tired, and Emily wakes her up, and mm -hmm. she's like, Santa came. Remember? Before, before it's, Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to say that. Yeah. Um, and I have it written when Tatiana says, Mommy, and she, it's like the, the M is kind of, Split, yeah, like m m m mom. Yeah, <laughs> that's because she's waking up. Right. Yeah, that's really cute. And Elvis, it's Emily and Chris that wake her up. Mm -hmm. Oh, one other thing I meant to say. Mm -hmm. Um, as I read it again, I was mm -hmm. just noticing how much I love how all the three children are very individual and very like. Um, they're super well-rounded and you, they each have their own likes and interests. And I really love how Chris mm -hmm. is like 10 years old, but he's very independent. He's very, like really helpful. He loves his art. He's really good at art. Mm -hmm. I just think, and like him and Emily, him and Emily has a special bond with each of her kids. Mm -hmm. And they're all really different. Individual Which bonds. I love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just think he's this. The second time I read it, um, he stood out to me because he's just like really sweet and mm -hmm. 10 years old is such a funny, cute age. Yeah, and 
you said there's so much heart, love, and it's funny, sort of. Mm -hmm. It's very charming. And I'm sure you'll love the final movie when it, when it comes out. I can't wait. On Christmas Day, too, the train going around the tree. That's, that's something mm -hmm. that will happen. Very wholesome, very charming. I think this movie should be released on, like, December 20th. So everybody's mm -hmm. watching it at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. Or around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you think it will get f five million views on? I'm just gonna put it on like YouTube or something and see what happens. Yeah. Do you think it will get? You said you think it will get five million views. <laughs> I mean, that's my prediction. Or it could. And my hope. End up on Amazon Prime. Netflix. It Ooh. could end up on one of those as a Christmas movie. Because it's very charming, it's it's kid friendly, mm -hmm. family friendly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a great message. Mm -hmm. Not like me before you. No, not like which that. says that suicide is socially acceptable when you're disabled. Mm -hmm. But Emily doesn't want to do that. No, Emily has a wonderful life. <laughs> it's like no way. I I want to be here. Yeah. To see my Tatiana graduate from high school, or Chris graduate from high school, and even college, mm -hmm. those sort of things. Oh, yeah. Like, Aunt Sue gives Jason some Christmas stuff, but it's books, maybe some clothing, and stuff for college. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Jason isn't really running to the tree. It's only Chris and Tatiana. Yeah. Jason kind of has that understanding that, you know, he's past the Santa phase, as yeah. I call it. Yeah. He's very mature. Mm-hmm. But he's a really good kid. Vanessa is. That's his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's wonderful. Very sweet. To kind of wrap things up, I kind of have a audience that I want this movie to appeal to. Uh-huh. Um... High school students, 16, 17, who are, like, in the dating world, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to pass up a, or reject a girl in high school just because she might use a wheelchair or mm -hmm. might look so-called different. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> and little kids, which is uh, Tatiana's age mm -hmm. and Chris's age, mm -hmm. I kind of have a mixed audience for it. Yeah. And employers, potential employers to see this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to just not hire someone just because they might use a walker or a wheelchair mm -hmm. or a service dog yeah appears in, i think yeah i think it appeals the movie is important for everybody to see mm -hmm. you know the disabled community everybody else you know it's just nice to see a group of people just living their lives and being completely accepting of one another. Mm -hmm. it, and it is. And Emily never has thoughts of suicide. But sometimes Emily laughs, but laughing can be a way to sort of cope with bad thoughts. Mm -hmm. You've heard the phrase, laugh that off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. She takes life very lightly and she has a great mm -hmm. life but but don't push emily's buttons or she <laughs> might run you over oh, yeah. with wheelchair yeah she'll protect her children of to at any cost mm -hmm. yeah she's a, i think emily's a really good person 
and probably, you know, I'm sure she runs into difficulties here and there in her life, mm -hmm. but she just takes it as it comes and laughs it off, you know, and looks mm -hmm. to the bright side. Yes. <laughs> just like us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's bump it. Let's bump. Mm-hmm. This has been a really great show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so appreciative. Thank you for having me, Renell. You, you too. Thanks and for watching, audience. Thank, thank you for watching the Renell Reed Show. The Renell Reed Show, everybody. <laughs> Fist bump. <laughs>